called it The Traveller, and its arrival changed us forever. Great cities were built on Mars and Venus. Mercury became a garden world. Human lifespan tripled. It was a time of miracles. We stared out at the galaxy and knew that it was our destiny to walk in the light of other stars. But the Traveler had an enemy, a darkness which had hunted it for eons across the black gulfs of space. Centuries after our golden age began, this darkness found us. And that was the end of everything. As the beginning of this franchise, you know, as the beginning of your adventure and destiny, what we've created is uh, a boots on the ground adventure. You know, the core gameplay experience for Destiny is you as a guardian, you with your weapons exploring the wild, uh, venturing back out into the frontier uh, to reclaim everything that we lost in the Golden Age. Uh, we say very often that who knows what the future of Destiny will hold. You know, when we take a look at Destiny, uh, we can imagine so deeply the ways in which we can innovate, the ways in which we can augment this experience and give players new ways to fight, new ways to enjoy the action. Uh, it really depends on the community that comes and plays this game. Uh, if you are as familiar as it, you, know, you sound with the Halo experience, uh, you can think back to how that experience became more elaborate over time. Uh, a lot of the services and features that we added to the Halo franchise was in direct response to a lot of the ways in which the community surprised us in the way they interacted with each other, uh, in the way that they used the game as a platform for their own creative expressions. Uh, so what we've done with Destiny is create a game that was as good a game as we could make. You know, we feel like this is the best game that we've ever made. If you look at uh, Halo Combat Evolved, we really conceived of that as a party game, you know, something you would enjoy on your couch. That was the tech that we had available to us at the time. So you could form up a team and you could play Halo with your friends, um, but now that we have, you know, leveraged the full power of the internet, now that we have worked with, you know, guys like Roger Wolfson and Chris Butcher, you know, some of the original minds that actually contributed to the creation of Xbox Live. Uh, these guys are still at Bungie, they've gone back to the drawing board and created new systems that would support a game that we have always wanted to make. Uh, a game where you can experience the things that are available to you with your friends. Uh, if you don't have friends that play games with you, we've created invisible matchmaking systems that will introduce you to other players along the path of your journey. Uh, as you blaze your trail through this world, they follow their path through this world. Where those two adventures intersect are these public events where there are these explosive things that happen, you know, aliens show up in mass and you can team up with those people to overcome those odds and to win that battle. Or if cooperative gaming just isn't your thing, you can always jump aboard your personal vehicle, boost off to your next moment with the story. We're giving the player full control over their level of social engagement, what sort of experience they create for themselves in Destiny so that it really does cater to gamers of different stripes, people who come from different sorts of backgrounds, they love their hobby for different reasons, and it'll satisfy their every mood. Uh, the idea of uh, a living social landscape, you know, a world that felt alive because of the presence of other players, uh, a place where you could have chance encounters with other heroes on their own adventure, uh, that feeling that anything can happen by virtue of the other people you'll meet who will swoop in on their personal vehicles to save the day in a public event. These are the things that we have daydreamed about for a long time at Bungie. Yeah, there are different types of public events. You know, there are war satellites that fall down from orbit uh, that have, you know, wonderful intel that we can glean about the Golden Age. So if you can defend that fixed position while your ghost does the work for you, you can extract that data. But here come the aliens that also want to scrounge, you know, the wastelands and pull the, you know, secrets of the Golden Age out for themselves. Uh, there are mining operations that you are supposed to sweep and clear. Uh, there are uh, capital ships that spawn in 
over, you know, your destination, you know, overfly that area, you know, drop ships come in, deploy ground units. Uh, you know, there are a lot of ways that we'll want to surprise the players of Destiny. You have only seen the way the Fallen interact in public events, but uh, there are different destinations that you have yet to visit. Uh, there are different alien races that you have yet to meet and engage, so Destiny still has a lot of surprises up its sleeves. <laughs> We created new tools that we could use to build brave, new, big, beautiful worlds and then fill them with action, uh, you know, cut very specific paths through that landscape that would take you on a thrill ride that tells you a very specific story, but then open up those expanses so that you can blaze your own trail, you can choose your own adventure. So it's been uh, extremely an ambitious undertaking. Uh, in terms of delivering that experience on four different consoles at the same time, uh, when I say that we reinvented the way we make games, that included creating a central development environment that is platform agnostic. So we have a Bungie dev kit, and we create the experience of Destiny in that development environment. We can then optimize a version of that game so that it can live on different devices that can handle it. So if you're on the PlayStation 3 and you migrate to the PlayStation 4, your Guardian comes with you. If you're on the Xbox 360 and you decide to opt into the Xbox One, all the weapons and armor and gear and the things that you've acquired by virtue of completing your missions and defeating your enemies are things that you take with you. Your fire team will absolutely scale to become a larger unit depending on which activity that you're enjoying. So if you like large, frantic gameplay that involves a lot of people that are all coordinating together, uh, I would say that um, you know, story missions are three guardians. A strike is three guardians. But there are playlists in the Crucible, the competitive arena, that do welcome six people to be on the same team. Uh, if you like an elaborate tactical scenario, the raid is going to be the most challenging thing that you've ever encountered in a bungee game. Not only are we going to welcome you to have a larger fire team, but these are going to need to be the best people on your friends list. They are going to be, need to be at the top of their game in terms of skill and progression and inventory and armory. Uh, it's not just about playing the game together, it's about communicating with each other, supporting each other, solving problems and riddles together. Uh, in terms of the three-man fire team, when you think about what we've created with Destiny, we want a group of people that can move through this landscape and still leave enough room in those spaces for them to have those chance encounters with other fire teams or other heroes because it's that random human element that gets thrown into the combat scenario that we found have really blown players' minds. You know, there we were, me and my two buddies, all of a sudden a ton of fallen ran out of these caves and engaged a bunch of hive in the middle of this three-way battle and we think we're going to die and then these other dudes showed up and they were even more powerful than we are and we all joined up together and we conquered in that battle. It's that randomness, it's that capacity for social combat that we wanted to create in Destiny. And if you're able to roll into those spaces with nine people all unified, the game can't really hold up against what you can deliver. You know, nine people rolling through those public events would become very crowded. Uh, but if those nine people are people who have never met each other before, we feel like the game is a lot more interesting. Uh, plus, in the story, a lot of the uh, aesthetic of the story is that humankind is reaching out into the stars for the first time in a long time. So we want some of those spaces to feel lonely, as if you're the first person to set foot there, and that it is a dangerous place, and you are cut off from the last safe city on Earth, which is why you know, a lot of the early messages about destiny were, be brave. Okay.